ladies and gentlemen, Chris Preston. How you doing? Howdy, Eli. How are you? Doing good, doing good. It's an honor to talk with you, and I like the shirt that you got on, too. Thank you. I'm representing a little bit today. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mountain Girl Experience. Right around the corner, too. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, it's like, well, it, it blows my mind that we're already halfway through 2021. Like, I was like going to say, like, oh, this event's probably still about two months away. <laughs> and then I looked at the calendar, I'm like, no, this is like a month away. Yes, that's that freaks me out a little bit when when you put it that way. But yes, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say that you're a, a busy person. What's your involvement with the Mountain Girl Experience? Well, uh, my main involvement started with a dream, I guess, um, that maybe I didn't even know I had, but I always thought an all female show would be cool. Yeah, um, I was also. Um, looking for more opportunities for females to play music. I play in an all-female band, Cold yeah. Town Dixie. We've been here whoop, on your whoop. show before. Yeah, shout out to those gals. Um, thank you. So, uh, you know, just always looking for more opportunities to play, especially yeah. locally. And um, so during the pandemic, there was um, a little online community that started on Facebook called um, Pikeville, Creative Com Pikeville Creative Community, I think is what it was. And so there were some meetings um, where people just tossed around ideas of, you know, what cool things we can we do when the world opens back up. Yeah. And I just happened to put it out there that, you know, I wished um, that there was, you know, um, an all female event or some more opportunities for females to showcase their talents in this area. And. Uh, I, you know, I put it out there in the universe, yeah. <laughs> and now it's happening. So Robin Irwin, um, who's the director of the App Theater. Wonderful woman. It, it, absolutely. Um, I really, this wouldn't be happening without her. She she latched on, I think, to this idea that I had and, and loved it and said, yeah. let's do it. And so, you know, with her help and the help of the App Theater, um, we are making it happen. So the the Mountain Girl Experience uh, is going to be an all day event um, in Pikeville at the App Theater. This is going to be on July twenty fourth. Um, it starts at eleven in the morning, goes till eleven at night. So it's it's an all day sucker. Wow. Yeah. So um, you know you might not want to be there for twelve hours, but there's a big schedule you can check out and be at the parts of it you want to be at. Um, but during the day, we have workshops, um, especially for kids. It's a very, um, it should be a family-oriented event. Mm -hmm. um, we're featuring females as the artists and musicians, but it's it's an event for everyone, you know. Yeah. Men, women, children, and, you know, all, all genders are welcome at this event. So during the day, we'll have workshops, and maybe you would like to talk about that in more detail. Um and then uh, we'll have concerts in between. We'll have some open mic opportunities. We'll have then our big evening concerts. Um, we'll have an art gallery. So um, all of this, you know, all of the entertainment will be provided by women, yeah. um, Appalachian women. And we're not just doing this to say, hey, <laughs> you know, here we are showcasing our talent. But but I wanted it to be an event that would do some good yeah. so um we chose the um perry klein west care emergency shelter which is like our homeless shelter here in pikeville uh, to be the recipient of um what we make for this event and, and we mainly want to earmark the funds for women and children services so mm -hmm. perhaps you know um uh, survivors of domestic violence and that sort of thing who might be at the shelter so we want those funds to help those folks and so we're saying i'm saying this is appalachian women helping appalachian women yeah so um again it's it's called the mountain girl experience but you know if it's very much open to all and and i say if you love women <laughs> if if you love your mother or your sister then you know or you want to help women in this area then then i ask for all to come and support this event i think that it's such a cool thing it, it's a uh kind of mind-blowing how many people don't know about that facility here in Pikeville. And I, I love that. Uh, is, so 100% of the proceeds is going to this, correct? Mm -hmm. And that, that's such a cool thing. And, you know, 
to see this movement happening in Appalachia, me and you were talking about a little bit before we hopped on air here about how everybody is just trying to help everybody. It used to be like one was trying to outdo the other. Now it's just, like you said, you put an idea out there and somebody that was almost a complete stranger is now helping to make it happen. And how you were talking about uh, with this Mountain Girl experience, uh, Broken Throne reaching out to y'all and making that beer, you didn't have to ask. They just wanted to do it. It's, <laughs> it's such a cool thing to see so much love being passed around here. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it really absolutely. Is. Uh, you know, we haven't had the event. The event's, what, six weeks away, uh, give or take, Something five. Something like that. And I already feel like um, we're seeing so many benefits from it already. So like you mentioned, um, Broken Throne Brewery, which is our um, – our new uh, local brewery here in, in Pikeville. Um, there are some women who work there. Um, so there's Jamie Sloan and Kayla Johnson. And they saw our artwork, which if you've seen any of our social media posts, mm-hmm. we have incredible artwork. And that's um, thanks to Jen Yauntz, who is um, just a wonderful artist who I met just who who offered her services yeah. um, because she believes in this event. So she offered to do all the design um, with our website, which is beautiful, um, and with our logo, um, the sticker that you have. Yeah. That's cool all. Sticker. Jen Yance did all of this. Offered her services. Isn't that beautiful? Such a cool I sticker. Hey, she and that's she what's can kick some shirt. butt. I'm yeah, telling you, she does a great perfect. job. It's perfect. It's so perfect. And so, same thing with the shirts, which we do have for sale. Um, and so, you know, there's that part of you know someone offering and saying, "I believe in this, and I want to do something about it." So the ladies at Broken Throne saw the posts, and I didn't even know them before this. We didn't know them, but they yeah. said this looks like something we want to be involved in. So, you know, they have developed um, and they just brewed it. And I guess it's doing its thing, fermenting or whatever beer does, Um, you know, a special brew just for our event. And they are donating two dollars for every uh, can sold to the West Care Shelter as well. Yeah, I'm not a big beer drinker, but I got to say, it looked pretty good in the videos that I was watching. And wow, it was like a very complicated process. I didn't know beer was that <laughs> complicated of a process, but those girls, hey, they're working hard on this. Yeah, and I'm trying to think. It's a honeysuckle something saison, and I don't fully I don't know, know what that to, is. I don't know how to spell or that last word saying, they just yeah. said. Okay. <laughs> I may not be saying it right, but I'm definitely going to try it. And um, and it sounds lovely. It really does. Yeah, and everything that I've heard about that Broken Throne place has uh, always been good things. And I see they have like all types of open mics mm-hmm. all the time. And I mean, it's just, there's so much cool things happening around this area, it seems like. I, I got to ask this, though, because I was wondering this right when I first seen the uh, design. What's the like, is, is girl spelled that way just to be cool? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> so girl, um, it's G R R L yeah, for everybody that is. don't know. So yeah, if you look up anything on this event, event it's a Mountain Girl G R R L experience, and the website is um, Mountain Girl Experience uh, dot com, and it's a really great website. It has all the information you would need about the event on there, but. Um, yeah, I took that from the Riot Girl movement. So going mm-hmm. back to like uh, early um, women in punk rock. So oh, Kathleen cool. Hanna um, of Bikini Kill. So they they had a song called um, Rebel Girl, and and it it sparked a a sort of feminist uh, movement in music in in that genre. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm intrigued by that. I'd like to say that I spent a whole lot of time thinking about th- that name. I, yeah. I just came out. I just said it, and the next thing I knew, it was being printed on things. Like, that's that's okay. That's, that's cool. what it is. But I do love it. But then, um, you know, Ralph Stanley had a song, um, How Mountain Girls Can Love. So I guess maybe I had Mountain Girls in in my mind from yeah. from my bluegrass background because I love that song and I love everything Ralph Stanley. But but does. but also I, I think though like whenever something just comes to you, I think that it's a sign, you know, like whatever that little voice in your head is or whatever that part of the universe is where I, wherever ideas come from because it's still mm-hmm. something scientists can't explain where ideas come from. Who knows? But I think that 
it's for a purpose, especially when it's so instant. Yeah, maybe. So, yeah, I mean, I, I love it, but I, there are things I've given a lot more. I probably gave more thought to what I ate for lunch today than 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 that name. But it, yeah. it just came to me. But I think, too, when I think girl, G-R-R-L, you know, it sounds like a growl, kind of like grr, Ooh, you know, like, like a that. fierceness. Yeah. And um, and maybe part of me wants that to come out in this name. That's well. I mean, it's it's basically like a female takeover for a day, and it's it's a really. I mean, it, it kind of has. It's it's cool to have that attitude behind it. And like you said, I mean, there is literally so much going on. I'm sitting here looking at the poster, but really, you have to go to the. Uh, I, I I had to go to the schedule earlier just to really see everything that's going on. I think one cool little detail that y'all added was the uh, local biz discounts. That's what it's mm-hmm. called on the website, at least. Yes, well, and there will be a lot more added to that um, as I get more time t- to do so. But, um, you know, this is an event that uh, I want it to be, you know, to help women in Appalachia, but I want it to, to help our whole community. I mean, um this community has done a lot for me. So if this event, um, you know, if it make, I want it to make money for our cause, but if it can help support and make money for our other businesses in town, that's a win-win as well. And especially after all of our local businesses suffered in the last year. So, um, so far we have on board CC Bell, um, the clothing store there, Faith Life Market, um, which is right down the street. Great place to get a good coffee drink and and mm-hmm. some food and and shop as well. Um, and then also um, Mountain Music Exchange, like the best music shop in Eastern oh, Kentucky. Yeah. So they're all offering a ten percent discount um, if you just show um, your ticket stub or your wristband. So th- in that way, you know those who um, come to our event, we can say, you know, hey, if it, during this break you want to take some time, go down the street, get a coffee at Faith Life. They'll give you 10% off. And so, you know, hopefully that just helps our other organizations, our other businesses to benefit as well. Yeah, it's, it's so cool. Like we were talking about earlier, everybody is just helping out everybody mm-hmm. when it comes to this. And there's all types of cool workshops that you're going to do, too. I mean, like people aren't just going to come to this thing and be entertained. Well, they can if they want to. Mm-hmm. But also, like if they want to learn something or actually mm-hmm. get involved themselves, they have to, the chance to do that. So like what's some of the workshops that people have to choose from? So right off the bat, the first event of the day is um, a painting workshop that will actually be outside in front of the app theater. Um, that's called Painting on the Plaza, and that's with um, a wonderful art- artist, Jessica Sayer. So also on our website, you'll see a list of all of our artists, <clears throat> as well as all of those folks doing workshops. You can read about them. You can see some, um, some uh, examples of their artwork. So um, that will be... Um, you know you can learn to paint a picture Um, later in the day outside we'll have um, a couple of workshops um, with dara riley riley from um, acoustic rainbow studio and so she does a thing called um, rhythm and resilience so it's kind of uh, i'm sure i'm not the best person to explain this but um, movement, music, um, yoga, mindfulness. And so okay. she's got um, a class that would be more for small children um, and their parents, and then a class that would be for, well, I guess it would be for the small children and the parents are there. <laughs> and then there is actually a class for um, preteens and adults as well. Okay. So those will be out outside. Um, and then some of our, we, we have two stages that will be going on. So our pavilion stage will be um, a covered stage that will be um, directly behind the app theater. So it'll be completely covered. Um, and we'll have a small stage there. And so our workshops there will include um, Sarah Kate Morgan from the Heinemann Settlement School. Mm-hmm. Um, she is bringing a ton of dulcimers. So like, I don't know, 30 or so dulcimers that she's just bringing and kids of all ages can, you know, hold a dulcimer and sit and learn and she will teach a song. She's she is a great music educator um, that works with the Hanman Settlement School. So yeah. she's going to do that. Well, well for the people then... that don't know what a dulcimer is, because I was one of these people <laughs> earlier today, for anybody out there that know, like has ever seen what I call a lap guitar. 
that's what a dulcimer is. I like the word dulcimer now more, mm-hmm. but I just I, I just always called it a lap guitar. I had no idea. I learned something new today. That's good. See, these workshops are already paying off. <laughs> hey, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, that's a it's a you know a very classic um, Appalachian instrument mm-hmm. um, made of wood. A lot of people hand make them. Um, you do hold it on your lap. They usually have anywhere from two to four or five strings. Um, some play it with a pick, some don't. So um, so she'll be teaching that. Um, she'll be playing some of that instrument as well. Um, we have another uh, really great uh, local dulcimer player, April Allen, is going to be actually doing a show um, playing dulcimer. Other workshops we have are um, ballad songwriting with Jen Tackett. So um, yeah. I'm sure a lot of your listeners know who Jen Tackett is. Love Jen. Yeah, just a fabulous singer-songwriter. I'm jealous of her boots. Those she, red boots. She has really cool yeah, boots. Yeah, yeah. They're, they, I think they've become her signature, those red boots. Very cool. So hopefully you will see her wearing the red boots at our <laughs> event. Um, she's bringing you know, pencil and paper and um, teaching, teaching a class on how to write a song, how to write a ballad song. Um, you know, Jen works with the, the 4-H department, mm-hmm. and so I think she brings some of her skills from that, you know, and teaching young folks as well. And then... Um, We'll be having uh, a workshop with uh, Abby the Spoon Lady. So she's uh, a very acclaimed spoon player. And if you think there's no big deal to play in the spoons... You have no idea. <laughs> look up one of her videos, right? It is crazy. Yeah. Like, like Alex up here earlier, uh, big shout out to Alex. Uh, yeah, we were explaining it to him, because, and he was, I guess he kind of had that like mindset, like, what can you do with spoons? <laughs> you have no idea what you can do with spoons. The, the, the whole time I've looked in my silverware drawer, I never thought that, like, if I clank these together the right way, it'll make some really cool sounds. She is awesome. I want to... That's another person I want to talk with because I have a lot of questions for her. How do you figure out like that's what you're good at in life? There's a lot of people that's probably like mm-hmm. thinking like, oh, I don't have a purpose. I'm not good at anything. Go in your silverware drawer. You never know what you can make out of it. She's awesome, though. I mean, it, it blows my mind. Yeah. If, if you look up Abby the Spoon Lady, I mean, you'll see she's she is um – a very colorful person who's, you know, led a really interesting life and still living it. So, you know, she, I remember seeing her years ago um, in Asheville, you know, busking on the street with a bunch of other street performers. Um, I think she's, she hops trains sometimes. I don't know. But, That's so cool. But she's really made a life, you know, found a talent um, and a niche. And yeah. uh, I love that she's bringing a ton of spoons and she's, you know, I think bringing her big green bus and parking it there at our pavilion stage and she's going to bring spoons out. And I guarantee you, you will have a ball and you will learn how to play the spoons and she'll do a show, you know, as well. So yeah. those are the workshops. Yeah, I mean, it's cool because like I, like we were saying earlier, like this ain't just a concert or anything. The name is so fitting. It's an experience. There is literally something for everybody. I think it'd be really cool to learn how to play with spoons. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know. I, you are not the only one. I know a couple other people who have said specifically, like, if I don't get to do anything else, I want to come and do the spoon workshop. So Yeah, it's. I mean, there, there literally is something for everybody. And I'm sitting here looking at the uh, artist you were mentioning earlier, and it that blows my mind. It, like, it, I almost get jealous that, like, God gave them so <laughs> much talent that I mean, like, literally you have some of the best of the best at this thing, too. And I also see, like, you have, like, you're going to have food trucks and stuff like mm-hmm. that, too, so people can get some good grub. But yeah. it's something for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, there'll be refreshments there. And then um, we have um, Shaley's Harbor is one food truck. So that's, like, Cajun seafood kind of thing going on, mm. not something we Ooh. get every day. Um, and Sounds then good. Um, we'll have barbecue as well. So, uh, and, and again, you know, I... I go to a lot of uh, festivals and I've played a lot of festivals where there are multiple stages and there are things going on all day, but um, it doesn't mean that, you know, you may be sitting in your seat that whole time. You know, we encourage folks to get up, you know, if this is if this is not the workshop you want to do, if this is not the band you want to see, go downtown and, you know, go go shop in our stores. You know, yeah. go buy something local, go up and visit our food trucks, et cetera, go to Broken Throne, come back later. You know, you that go. you can come in and out of this event as much as you want 
and you know it's it's more of you know the kid workshops during the day the kids are kids are welcome there all day and all evening if they can stay up that late but um you know it's it it is it's just just to be an experience and you know i think with the workshops all being led by women i hope that it inspires other you know young folks to to say oh i could you know this is something i could do too this person's doing that as well Well, there's something about appalachian women though that i mean like the the pride i don't exactly know the right word but i mean j- there's some very powerful women i mean the my family members like as i look as i look back on my grandmother and some of my aunts and stuff like that i mean very strong willed mm-hmm. determined yeah. women i mean you, you there's you don't see that a lot in like big cities or other parts around the world it's the women around here have, like I said, strong-willed women. That's grit, grit, grit. Oh, that's a good word. Yeah. I, I forget about that word. Kind of makes me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, determination, strength, and then love. The, I mean, who, who among us doesn't have you know a mamma or a granny that really influenced us or, mm-hmm. um, I don't know, helped lead us down yeah. the path we were meant to go. And and I I was lucky to have a, a mamma and a granny that really influenced me, you know, and yeah. my mama as well. And so, you know, maybe part of this is sort of me doing doing this event, you know, in tribute to them. Yeah, to kind of honor them. And, and, I, and I love how you mentioned that at the beginning of this, too. Like, if you have a grandmother that meant a lot to you or a mom or anything like that, you coming out will basically be you – showing respect to them, showing them honor. Because I I grew up a lot of my life being raised by my mom or my grandmother and stuff like that. And I really learned a lot about women, but the behind the scenes and stuff like that. And that's why I think it's so cool that this is happening to, like you said, empower the younger women to show them that like, hey, the world is yours just as much Mm -hmm. as it is everybody else. Yeah, It's an equal playing field. It's 2021. Like it's, and I mean, we were talking before about how times have drastically changed for the better. It's such an amazing time to be alive. And I think that this is going to be awesome, especially for the future. I mean, like it's, this is such a cool event right now. It being the first one, is this something that you're going to try to do again? Well, Eli, you know, initially this, this was just this, this one idea for this one time. And, and <laughs> just, just this morning, I got out my iPad where I've been keeping notes and I wrote for next year. And I had like a list. Oh, wow. So, uh, you know, if it goes well, I could see this. I'd love to see this be, you know, a three day festival. I'd love this. I'd love to see our park full of, you know, crafts and um, artisans, female mm-hmm. artisans. I'd love to see, you know, every a, in venue in town having all female artists playing, you know, mm-hmm. during that time. For instance, so um, the sky's the limit. It just depends on how how well we're received this year, and you know how successful we are. But I know that you know there are some who say, "Well, um, you know, why are you? I don't know. Why are you ex- excluding men, which we're not? Um, why are you having an event that's you know you don't you're not booking any men? That's not true. It, there there will be men playing definitely. Um, the the artists are either female solo artists or it's a female led group. Take back in the um, Starlight Review. Yeah. Um, who they will be our closing act. You know this is a band led by a female, a rock band led by a female, and you don't see that really often. Mm-hmm. And coming from the bluegrass world, um, you know, for Coltown Dixie, we've been a band for 12 years. And luckily, these days, there are lots of females that we see. But it's changed so much even in the time that we started. And there were festivals that we would play where we'd, we would be the only females on the whole bill. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, and if you listen to the radio now, if you count how many female artists you hear in an hour compared to how many mm-hmm. male artists you hear in an hour. Yep. And I don't know why that is, and I'm not saying I can change anything, but I think just just anytime we can, you know, just 
just make the playing field a little more even, I guess, and, yeah. you know, give females more of an opportunity than they may get or may have been able to get in the past. Well, I mean, we can go down the rabbit hole about how everything has changed and how some things still need to change for women. And I think that, like you said earlier about how this will just empower the young women coming up in this world to show them that, like, hey, you are still just as much capable as anybody else to take on the world, if not more. I mean, even if somebody like were to say that to me, like, why are you doing it this way? But why not? You why know, not? like, 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 what is so wrong with yeah. honoring women? It's because of y'all that life <laughs> exists in the first place. Like, we would not be here if it wasn't for women. So, what? Like, I, I just, I do not get that mindset. I think that somebody like that, if they do have that question, they have personal issues to deal with. It sounds that's what it sounds like to me. Because I think that this is nothing but a good thing for women. And, you know, 2021 is a lot, a lot more different than 50 years ago. We still mm-hmm. have a lot to change, but I think that events like this is going to help push that change forward. And that's why events like this are so necessary. And I, I, th- I, think, it's, I think it's awesome. And the musicians that y'all have lined up, too. I mean, <laughs> this I, it is a star-studded event. Uh, I appreciate it. I am so proud of this lineup um, and so excited about it myself. I mean, I'm excited to sit and watch every one of these bands. And, um, you know, you and I talked earlier about about the community of musicians in this area, you know, uh, whatever gender we are, everyone is very supportive of each other. And it doesn't even really matter, you know, what what genre of music you play. And more and more I see festivals where there's a bluegrass band and then there's a, a, a soul band and then there's a rock band and then there's a country band. Yeah. If it's good music, it's good music. If it's good entertainment, yeah. you know, well, it, it just is. And so I, I wanted to bring that to the table and have a variety of genres of music represented. So, um, so we're going to have Zoe Howard, who is um, – uh, I don't even know if I should say up and coming because I think she's already up. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, she's, well, yeah, I heard of that girl. And like before I knew it, like she was already making yeah, a big name for herself. Yeah, yeah, she was just on Red Barn Radio the other day. So a great young um, female uh, artist from Sayersville. She again, she leads, you know, an all all male band. And I think she's a senior in high school. You know, young, young. Whoa, person. I yeah. did not know that. Yeah. Yo, I know. I wish I was that cool in high school. I know, right? (laughs) (laughs) I agree. Um, She's kind of got like a Janis Joplin kind of vibe going. Just, you know, seems like just a really cool young lady. And so we're really proud and happy to have her. Um, We have Laura Helene, who is a singer songwriter who plays banjo and guitar, I know for sure. Um, Maybe some other instruments. Um, I learned about her. I did. Um, I was on a podcast um, for University of Kentucky for their Appalachian Studies Center, and I learned about her through mm-hmm. that. Um, we have again. Sarah Kate Morgan is doing the Dulcimer Workshop, but she's doing her own show as well. Okay. So she's a graduate of um, the Moorhead State University um, Appalachian Music Program. There, I know I'm not saying that exactly what that's called, but. She plays a variety of instruments as well. Just a beautiful singer, um, songwriter, dulcimer player, guitar player. Um, April Allen is actually uh, a dulcimer player. I have a jam uh, scheduled with her a few days from now. Actually, she found out she's my neighbor. Um, <laughs> but cool. I, um, we were playing some um, a radio show in Heinemann that she was at. I guess our, our paths crossed a few times. And she plays dulcimer like nobody I've ever heard. So I I think almost with a rock vibe, she just has her own way and her own style. And she has some different dulcimer. She has a really deep sounding one. Um, And, um, you know, just a a great up and coming local artist here. Um, Well worth checking out. Um, Those acts uh, that I just mentioned will be on the pavilion stage during the day, sort of in between the workshops. Yeah. Um, and then uh, in the evening, we'll move into the app theater itself. 
and um, move into the nice, comfortable uh, seats there for the evening concerts. And um, so here we'll have, um, um, we'll start out with the Black Dragons, which I'll have to tell you about that band in a minute. Yeah, that it sounds very um, interesting. We have Emily Jamerson. Um, we have Jen Tackett. We'll be doing a, a set. My band, Coal Town Dixie, as the host band. Um, and then we round the evening off beautifully with Chelsea Nolan, Sonora May, and Beck in the Starlight Review. We'll That's close awesome. it out. Yeah. I mean, like almost every, like almost all my favorite female musicians are on this lineup. Like my, my mouth literally dropped when I said like everybody I was going to be on. I'm like, this is going to be so cool. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just was lucky that they said yes when I asked them. And I've, I've been lucky to to cross their paths, you know, mm-hmm. on shows. And um, I play with Waylon Nelson as well. You yeah, know, Waylon's Waylon a great Nelson. guy. Yeah. So I play in his band. Um, and and I guess more probably through some of the festivals I've played with him. You know, I've gotten to play on the same bill as Chelsea and Sonora. And, um, they, you know, they believed in it. Sonora, really, she she's an inspiration to me. She's done a similar thing to this and still does um, a show in, uh, I'm trying to think if it's in Stanton or in that area, mm-hmm. that she does an all-female concert as well. And so that was, um, you know, a real inspiration to me to do that. But. Yeah, the, these are bands that I love. These are bands yeah. that I would pay to go see and and sit and watch and learn from and be inspired by. Well, like you said, I mean, like almost every single genre, no matter what you like, you're going to like somebody on this. Like how y'all have the bluegrass sound back in the Starlight Review. I mean, like, Beck can rock. That oh, woman. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Like, some like I'll like I'll be listening. To them. Like I just get pumped up. I'm like I'm ready to jump over a mountain. Like I don't like she <laughs> she gets me pumped sometimes. And but Sonora, yeah. I've been listening to her uh, recent stuff that she came out with. What's that song? Colors is that the name of it? Yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. I love on her colors. New CD. Love mm-hmm. colors. Such a beautiful song. And the music video mm-hmm. is whoever made that music video. That's a work of art. But I don't I don't know how to describe her genre. Like I, I was trying to talk to somebody about her the other uh-huh. day, and I was like, I don't know what you would even call it. You know, it's interesting because I could be wrong about this, but I think I read something where she might have even it, it was describing her as Americana, and she might have even described herself as Americana, which is real interesting to me because her husband Tyler Childers. Yeah has won awards in the Americana music industry, but he does he shuns yeah, that yeah. that genre title. I've seen that. You know, he's he's very vocal about it it's country music. I'm a country musician. Why do we have to have these other labels? Yeah. Um well, and, yeah, and I get I've, that. I've never understood that either because like and just in my personal opinion, I'm not a musician. I don't know. But to me, like I don't really see a lot of the difference between like folk and Americana. I know there's like more traditional folk sound, but with the modern folk sound, I don't really, like, I don't, can't really differentiate the two. And even then, I mean, and like, then you get into like, Americana can also sound a lot like country western. And then there's alt country. Yeah. So, I mean, like you're, to to me, like I can see Tyler's point of view, but I think, I don't know if this will happen, but maybe one day. It'll just be called music. There, 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 there won't be like any genres yeah. or anything because, like, even nowadays, whenever it comes to uh, pop music being made nowadays, you'll hear so many sounds mm-hmm. from so many different places. Like, I mean, like that Diplo guy, he makes country EDM stuff, and nowadays you're having you're having a hip hop influence in it as well. Back in the Jason Aldean days and stuff like that, you had a lot of uh, rock. That was involved with it, so I don't know. I mean, like I think that hopefully one day we can just call it music because it's getting very confusing. It's <laughs> a good point. Yeah, then there's so much crossover, so much yeah. you know melding of genres, and what's what's wrong with that? Again, if it's good music, it's good music. So exactly. I I don't know if Sonora. I don't I don't know what she would call her music, and I don't know what I would call it, but it's beautiful. Yeah, it is. Um, it's beautiful. It's heartfelt. She's a beautiful singer songwriter. Um, and she she mainly plays uh, guitar, although mm-hmm. she's played flute like on on a song before. Well, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. So, um, and Jen Tackett, I would maybe say, 
country, I guess, yeah. would be more of a country yeah. tinge singer. Um, you know, Chelsea Nolan has a really soulful voice, um, is, but maybe she would be Americana. I don't know. See, that's the thing. It gets so confusing yeah. nowadays. So you just have to come to the shows and the show and decide, decide, for, decide yourself. for yourself. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the, yeah, I want to talk to you also about uh, the Black Dragons. We got into a little bit before we hopped to Mer- um, and I stopped you. I'm like, we need to save this. This is very <laughs> interesting. So tell me a little bit about the Black Dragons. So the Black Dragons are um, a group of, actually now they've just graduated, so former pharmacy students from Appalachian College of Pharmacy. So I teach there uh you know, every bluegrass musician has to have a job to pay for our bluegrass habit, yeah. our music habit, right? Day job. So exactly. uh, I teach there in Oakwood, Virginia. Um, and then I teach an elective course in the summer, and it's called Music and Medicine. And I always say I can't believe that the school even lets me teach it, but they do. <laughs> so I was able to meld, you know, my love of music with with my profession. So that, is that like an idea you just had on your own? Yeah. Like that's... Yeah. It seems like a complicated process to go about. But like, like what kind of like mm-hmm. what made you want to uh, do that in the first place? Again, I mean, my, my brain goes to music, you know, 20 hours out of the day at least. So how, how could I guess it was, you know, how can I take what I love yeah. and and do more with it? Maybe influence other students um, here, you know, to find something in music uh, that they maybe didn't know about Uh, it's a way to help i I use music and talking about songs or artists in a way to teach um concepts so so a a classic example is bb king famous blues guitarist um had diabetes so you know there there were advertisements actually back i think in the 80s for um you know one touch test strips or something you know he had to you know check his blood sugar prick your fingers right yeah. multiple times a day and then it's very painful to play guitar so you know we can just take that concept and think about you know what 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 does a person with diabetes you know have to face uh. you know how how can they overcome their challenges for instance um, we talk about you know songs that maybe mention medications um, and learn more about the meds through do the you songs. do doctor feel good I don't know if I have doctor F- feel good on there but i have um i want a new drug remember that song i want a new drug oh Oh, maybe six who's that Um, again uh, huey lewis in the news yeah 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 yeah. so you know a lot of songs that mention medications are like it's illicit drugs but like within that song so we might break it down and say okay he says i want a new drug one that won't make me sick okay what drugs do we know that treat nausea you know? Yeah. So like breaking it down and doing it like that. But then there are songs like um, Jason Isbell, um, Elephant, that is about, you know, a cancer patient. Yeah. Um, so maybe we might listen to that song and talk about, you know, what do patients, you know, with an, uh, a cancer diagnosis go through. So those are just some of the yeah. things we do in the course. But the final project is I actually put these students into a band and I, I have them, you know, list for me what their talents are can they play an instrument can they sing and i don't expect that a lot of them can Mm -hmm. but if i can get at least enough guitar players that i'll split it up and have you know one instrumentalist per group i only have like 20 25 students in the class one singer whatever and somehow uh, kind of a magical group ended up getting put together and so for the final project they have to write a song and they either perform it or create a video and they can parody another song. I don't expect, you know, folks within a few weeks just to be able to write their own melody. Yeah. But it has to have to do with medication or, or advocate for health care um, or something to that effect. Mm-hmm. So the Black Dragons, and they give themselves a name, well, um, the mascot for the Oakwood uh, Appalachian College of Pharmacy is in the old um garden high school and their mascot was the dragons okay so i was going to ask about yeah, the name so that's where yeah. the dragon so they still have the dragon on the mural so these students did a song about black lungs so it, it turns out that all three females in the group had fathers who are coal miners mm. and um one uh, has a father who's really suffering greatly with black lung disease 
So they wrote the song from that perspective and just talking about, um, you know, what um, their experience had been, what their mm-hmm. father's experiences had been. Well, the, that project kind of actually it got some national attention and NPR contacted us oh. to do a show about it. Huh. Yeah. But the song that they did was to the tune of Jim, Jamie Johnson's In Color. And once NPR learned that it was not an original tune, mm. they weren't so interested anymore. And I said, that's okay. We can we can rewrite this as an uh, original tune. So we actually went down to Tony Mullins' 2-5 studio yep. down, Shout the, to down the road here. Yeah, uh, back over the winter and um, redid the song as a, an entirely um, original project. That group, I, I play with them mm-hmm. um, because they let me and ask me. Um, but the there are two females from Belfry area and then a male musician from um, Bluefield oh, yeah. area. Um, but they're really good. And so we've been asked and have performed at some um, like Black Lung um, meetings. Um, there was an unv- unveiling in Whitesburg a couple years ago um, with a, a monument to all those who've lost uh, their lives to black lung in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we've been able to use music for advocacy and increase awareness of uh, of the plight of, of those folks. And I love when you can do that yeah. with music. And so these folks are still playing. And because I was making the lineup, I wanted to give them a spot. <laughs> yeah, that, that's awesome. And that's such a unique way and probably for some a better way to learn like if if something i'm interested in also involves something else that i'm Mm. maybe even more interested in yeah like music i could probably learn a little bit better so i can see how that class would can definitely help people out especially if you Mm -hmm. love music that's a neat little way to go about it have you so have you had any like people like just do songs out of left field like whenever you're talking about cover songs i don't i'm trying to think of like songs about medicine well, they can take I'm a tune. I'm not thinking of any good ones, yeah. to be honest. They can take a tune and redo it. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, what was the song? I'm actually having Sh- to look sugar, it how up. Get, sugar, oh, sugar, 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 how you get so... Yeah, sugar, sugar, how'd you get so... Uh, so fly? Baby, so, so maybe. I think so, that I, had some students that reworked that to like, sugar, how'd you get so high? And it was about diabetes. Oh, so the cleverness! Right? That is yeah. really clever. Yeah, but yeah. you better give them an A plus oh, on that yeah. one. That, that, that that's <laughs> worth it. Just the name alone. That is cool. Yeah. So yeah. that's been a very fun thing to do. So yeah, out of that, um, and and I have an organization there at the college where I find any students who have a talent, and we go and play. Um, you know, at the the nursing home and the yeah. assisted living and so forth, and I'm I'm just a big believer, and I try to I try to impress that upon our students. If you have a talent, I think that it's your it should be your mission then to use that for good, yeah, for, for the good of others and to bring happiness and joy to others if you can. I think that that's something very very important for a- anybody that's in any form of entertainment to understand like i've gotten depressive bouts where i'm like oh do people really like me for me are they just using me for entertainment yada 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 but whenever you see the reaction well the uh, impact that you can have on people you really realize just how powerful your gift is and if you're using that gift for your own fame or money or whatever have be it i think you are going to end up depressed after Mm -hmm. a while and you need to realize that not everybody has these gifts that's kind of like one thing that i kind of got me in that bout because i'm like why am i so weird why why do i have to be why does my brain have to be weird why can't i be like everybody else and i think that a lot of entertainment entertainers unfortunately feel that way and uh i just think that it's very important to keep in mind that like you're weird for a reason your brain is different from anybody else's for a reason whatever that energy is out there in the universe they put this in you for a reason and you need to use that reason for good i mean every the reason i'm still even here today is because of the musicians that i listen to or entertainers that i watch we bring joy to the world 
And it's that sounds egotistical to say, but I mean, who else is going to do it? You it's, know, it's so true. And then and 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 look, even if you're not a musician, you are, uh, you know, you're making your impression on other people by introducing others to musicians that they might not be aware of by talking about this event. You know, who knows how many people, and I hope a lot, will hear this conversation and be inspired to take part in this event, which will then help our emergency homeless shelter. So yeah. your talent then also, look what that can do to help yeah. others. It, yeah, it's, it really is a beautiful thing. And mm-hmm. I think that it's just very important for entertainers to understand. I think it's – Jen posted something the other day. I'll have to even, like – see what she said because she worded it so good and it was on the same exact day that i was kind of in my feels and having them thoughts and stuff like that such a big shout out to jen tech she's such an awesome person and uh, now i can't find it <laughs> <laughs> dang i hate, hate when that happens jen where'd it go ah, she posts so much stuff but she kind of had a uh we're t- was talking about basically the same thing that we are now, and it's just uh, you have to have that reminder that we're here for a reason. And, and I, I did I, see that post. Yes, I, I know what I, you're talking about. But uh, but anyways, like how y'all are doing this, you know, you were using your powers and all of your knowledge for something for a cause so beautiful and so meaningful. I think it, it used to, in my opinion, there was a lot of uh, egotism around this area and people are kind of not one to work with others maybe not give them the knowledge that they had or just i don't really know how to explain it but nowadays you just see everybody working together everybody supporting each other that ego aspect is kind of washed away it seems like there's no pride there's there's pride in the community not in ourselves pride in appalachia and it's just it's, it's a beautiful movement going on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, you know, I, I know so many musicians who play with so many other musicians, you know, yeah. um, uh, people who play in three and four different bands. And, and nobody seems to be jealous about that. It's, you know, it's just OK. Everybody's just supporting each other. I just don't see how people do that. Like a well, a, there's, a, a, yeah, a, there's a, bi- a big shout out to uh, Mark Cheney, uh, Jake Ratliff. And Sean Mullins. I mean, like them three. That's just the ones I can name off the top of my head. I don't know how they do it. Like they're all in like two or three bands, or and then doing their own solo stuff. I mean, very talented people <laughs> around here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we we've, we've we've got it going on in East Kentucky, and I think we should I think we should use that more. I think we should make a lot of that more. I think. It, because it, well, it's weird. Like I, I've thought about this before. I well, I was talking to you before I hopped on air. I've bounced around a lot in my life. I've lived in Virginia. I've lived in Georgia, kind of in North Carolina, and everywhere here in Kentucky. But everywhere that I've went, I have never seen the amount of talent like we have around here anywhere else. It is super weird <laughs> because like I, I don't get it. May like I, me and my friends have tried to figure this out. We've had really long discussions about it. But maybe it's just kind of the roughness about growing up in the mountains. It's a very rough lifestyle, even if you're kind of doing good in life. It's still, we have harsh winters. Poverty is a very real thing around here, unfortunately. The economy around here is getting a lot better. But, I mean, we struggle. And I think that beauty comes from struggle. Oh, yeah. That's an excellent that's an excellent point. I, I agree with all that about the struggle, and I think that that our you know our culture has not been um, respected as much as as other you know cultures here, even in the United States. I think we're really unique, and um, I think that maybe we feel like people don't want to listen to us or don't care what we have to say. Like maybe the country or the government hasn't cared what we, what we say or, you know, haven't cared about us here in Eastern Kentucky. And maybe from that comes, and I think this may be where we have so many good songwriters is, you know, there's a voice. I'll Mm -hmm. I'll get my voice out some way and here's how I'll do it. I don't know. And then, you know, those voices are always so soulful and emotional. I mean, Mm -hmm. You know, you, you 
you know, Tyler for sure, Chris Stapleton's voice, Nick Jamerson, you know, yeah. I, I, I love these, you know, it's not just somebody reading off some lyrics to the tune. You know, yeah. they, they feel the music. Now you can tell, well, even whenever you're looking at most of the al- album credits about even big stars that come from around this area, the album credits are very minimal. Whenever you like, you're looking at a pop, a very popular pop song or something like that. You'll have 28 writers on it or something like that. Mm-hmm. And whenever you're looking at a Tyler Childers album, most of the time it might it might be Sturgill with them or something. <laughs> it may be somebody else, but most of the time it is just them. You know, and you're getting their honest take on things. Going back to Sonora, like her song Colors, I went and looked at the lyrics of that after I watched it because that song just. I was like, what did I even just listen to? Like, it, it, it blew my mind. But I mean, like, just like reading the lyrics about it, it's just, it's almost poetry, you know? It's, oh, yeah. yeah. If you just read those lyrics, they, they are poetry. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, but like, not even just musicians around here, the producers, the artists in general, the business minds that come from around here, it's, it's unlike anything that I've ever seen. And yeah. I think that this area is going to thrive because of it, especially like how cool downtown Pikeville has got with their uh, art thing that they have going on. The Arts I, District, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is that what it's called? The Arts District? I think so. That's a good name for it. I think so. Where the umbrellas are hanging. Yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. they and they done the big uh, mural there beside the uh, courthouse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, some people don't know about this. It blows my mind. But behind Hardy's, there's this uh, thing called a prayer tree. And it's like a little place where people can hang out. And uh, if you got a prayer or a praise, you can write it on this notepad and hang oh, it on a tree. I didn't know about that. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of people that uh, don't. And like, there's just so many neat little things going on in downtown Pikeville that you don't see anywhere else. And it, I don't know, I, I've, it's, so, it's colorful. I love all the lights that they have hung oh, up. Yeah. They're playing music all the time. It's just such a, uh, it creates an environment like no other. Absolutely. And Ian, you mentioned art um, and, and the, the art, the arts district downtown. I do want to mention that we have an art gallery that will be at the Mountain Girl event as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. So we will have, I have four artists now and I might have more, um, but in the lobby, um, they will have their art set up just for display um, because I wanted to feature not just musicians, but, you know, visual artists as well yeah so and if you want to learn more about those artists they're listed on our website as well do you have our website yeah 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 maybe you can (laughs) click on that and read off um those names yeah and i love how y'all actually like uh put examples of their art on there yeah that's the thing that was making me jealous i'm like i I can barely draw a stick figure okay (laughs) And, and this like uh jen Jen Yance. Jen Yance. So Yance. that's that's the artist who who we were talking about earlier who did all the artwork for the logo and so forth. Yeah. For that, the event. I, yeah. I like that last name. You don't see that very often. Mm-mm. Jen Yance. Well, I like that little painting that she done of the. Uh, it looks like the brakes. Is that the brakes? Maybe that's not the brakes. Looks like that big rock that people sit under at the brakes. Yeah. Uh, Meredith Mullins. So that's she's actually my cousin, and I, I've always known that she was very talented. So I wanted. Her to have the opportunity to display because I think I don't know a lot about art, but I I know that I see walls that that are just blank, and I don't know why there's not something on. Them. Yeah, <laughs> and what you know, so why don't we? Um, you know, there are people creating pieces of art every day in their homes. Like let's let's create an opportunity to get those out where people can see them. Yeah, well, like even uh, like how we were mentioning a CC belt earlier, the wings that they have outside oh, yeah. that anybody and everybody takes Taking pictures their in front pictures. of. Like yeah. I, I'm, I almost, like I basically walk or skate or something around downtown Pikeville every day, and every single day there's somebody there taking a picture. It, mm-hmm. Is that Aretha Franklin? She done a uh, painting of there online, the Queen of Soul. I guess yes, so. I think so. It's a dang good painting there. I think so. Uh, Lena mm-hmm. Oxshire. Yeah, so I don't know Lena, but I read about her because back during the flooding that happened last year in um, uh, Johnson County and Floyd County, she had donated some art to that. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was really cool, uh, you know, that she just did that. Oh, so ar- Artists have a big heart. Most of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the, one, uh, the one we were talking about earlier, uh, Liv Taylor. Yeah, so Liv Taylor just just came um, to the table in the last um, week or so and has some incredible artwork and 
I'm the, excited. Yeah, the one about the trees and the lake and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That is crazy. I, now, that's something I like to hang up at my house, but I just don't. How would you even get started on something like that? It, it blows my mind. But you can speak with these artists, so they'll yeah. be there with their artwork, so you can ask them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, like this is going to be yeah. something so cool, and I can't wait to see what y'all even add before them, because, like you said, like y'all still have so much going on. How? Uh, where can people get tickets for this, and how much do they cost? All right. So the tickets. I think you will be surprised after you hear everything we've talked about today. The budget price of these tickets so for an all-day pass for all the events workshops daytime evening concerts 20 bucks and that's crazy i know right that is wild we're not out to hurt anybody but you know if you want to donate extra when you get there for (laughs) for our cause or bring I, i have a list of things of needs that are on our website um, for the West Care Shelter. So they basically say, if you use it in your house, we can use it. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, household items and so forth. We'll have boxes where folks could also um, bring some donations, and I hope people will do that. But 20 bucks for the full event. If you just want to bring your kids and do the daytime workshops and so forth, that's $12. Cool. So, um, and you can get tickets. You can go to... Um, the app website, which the app is the Appalachian Center for the Arts. That's our theater down in downtown Pikeville, which is where the event will be. And so that's www.theapparts.org. So T-H-E-A-P-P-A-R-T-S dot org. And so there's a link you can click on for tickets. If you're on Facebook, um, you can find our event page. You can click for tickets there. Um, you can also call the app theater at 606-262-4004. Also, um, I would like to add as another incentive to come, um, we were talking about Mountain Music um, Exchange earlier, Mm -hmm. and they're going to be, I haven't even mentioned the trade show, so we're going to have a trade show um, where there will be a lot of um, uh, folks who uh, will have displays of... um, their businesses there, there will be um some free massages um hey, so right. yeah. I can get behind that. yeah <laughs> um so uh billy joe Kasky from um uh west liberty is um will be promoting her business and doing massages and so some different um female uh folks who have uh businesses in the area um but Mountain Music Exchange, so Joni Cleary, she's, you know, the, the female. Love Joni. The, she's the female presence at Mountain Music Exchange, yeah. and she has the record shop there. So she's going to be there with some displays of instruments that are like a specific female models. Hmm. Yeah, from okay. Mountain Music Exchange. And um, we'll be giving away a guitar. And, you know, I was down at uh, MME yesterday, and Kevin Harmon said, you should get everyone to autograph it. Hey, and give neat. it away. I know, right? And I've done that that's at festival. Cool I don't know how many times I've autographed a guitar at a festival for a giveaway. I didn't even think about doing it at, at this, but we will. So we'll get Sonora. We'll get everybody to you know autograph a guitar, and at the end of the night, um, we'll give that away. That's so cool. I know, right? I, Kevin and them guys up there are doing such cool things when it comes to music around this area. I remember whenever they were still set up where Tony's studio mm-hmm. is now, mm-hmm. and it's just so cool to see how much they've grown. <laughs> Like, it, it's it's just such a good film whenever you see your friends doing so good in life. Yeah, that is a great shop. I highly recommend if you're looking for an instrument, if you're looking for lessons to go see, go to Mountain Music, Music Exchange. I went in mm-hmm. there to drop off some flyers last week and walked out with a, another guitar that, that I, I didn't need. <laughs> I, do the, I do the same thing with records. Like I, I, I go in there just to stop by and see everybody. Yeah. And then Joni gets me in the record mm-hmm. shop, and I'm a big vinyl collector. And she mm-hmm. gets me dropping about 30 bucks or something like that. Yeah. And yeah, I'm walking out of there with vinyl, and <laughs> my wife is mad at me again. But oh, it's that, yeah. they're everybody up there. Haas, Jason, Joni, Kevin, all of them are just yeah. incredible people. I blame Haas for the reason I bought a guitar. Hey, ha- hey ha- Haas is a great guitar player, the big <laughs> Shout out to Haas. Yeah. I, I, he was, uh, I remember him at the record store before Joni there. And Haas, that man has some music knowledge. I like talking with him. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, and, and I mean, heck, y'all are going to have quite a few uh, booth and vendors there. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you, li- literally people, I would just say, go onto the website because it would almost be impossible to mention everything and anything that y'all have going on. You I are agree. quite a busy woman. Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I know that this is all going to be worth it. And a big shout out. 
and a thank you to you and everybody that's working with you behind the scenes to make this possible. I think that this is going to be a beautiful thing, not only for the women of Appalachia, but just for Appalachia and Eastern Kentucky as a whole. And I can't wait to see what y'all do next year. Ah, next year. All right. Well, I'll, I will be back here, Eli, and we'll talk about it. Chris, thank you for everything. <laughs> thank you so much. We'll see you next week, folks.